Well, yes. And the, the, yeah, the secret is always later. Hey, come on. So anyway, today we're going to take a look at, um, well, doing a 5-volt addressable LED setup, but then using 24-volt to distribute the power. Because 5-volt is nice, is, is great because it doesn't use a lot of power, it's very efficient, and um, it's single LED addressable. If you step up to 12 volt, you often end up with per three ad LEDs addressable. And well, 12 volt will allow you to use shorter cables. As I said, that it has its per three addressable downside, or if you have WS2815, you have the downside that um, it is per LED addressable, but then it wastes a lot of power because it still needs to step down from 12 volt to three volt about which the LED is. So basically a lot of power is burned off blindly. And well, I was like, okay, but what if we wanted to use 24 volt? Because the current pre-assembled boards all support 24 volt. So we could still use uh, our Dig Udo and Dig Quad to do all the level shifting and, and all the ports and the terminals and fusing and stuff like that, power distribution because it'll, it'll take 24 volt in, regulate that to whatever the ESP and other stuff needs, and then output 24 volt again. But then, I mean, we'll be doing a 24 volt LED episode in the future. I have already one strip in and I ordered another one yesterday. Um, but 24 volt addressable LED strip has the downside that it's per six addressable. So now if you have a meter with uh, 60, 60 LEDs per meter, that means you only have 10 addressable zones. But what if we could use 24 volt power for the transport, for the power injection and stuff like that, but then use five volt strip? Well, that's, I'm gonna remove this giant thing here. That's where these guys come in. Late to the party, that's okay, Philip, that's okay. So these are DC-DC converters. Go away, Quindor, Quin, Quin LED. Uh, and these all output 5 volt. So let's let's put them in order of size. Uh, yeah, this one's a bit chunky. So first off, we have this tiny little one, which says it'll do 5 volt and 5 amp output and 12 to 24 volt in. Okay. Uh, then we have this one, which also says it'll do 5 volt and 5 amp out with 24 volt input. But then we have this one, and it'll do 10 amp output 5 volt and then we have a chunky boy here which says it'll do 5 volt 50 now now these values aren't chosen arbitrarily uh, 5 amp is generally what you need if you have a single injection point at an edge of an led strip so uh, if if you imagine like 10 meters of led strip and you inject the the front the middle and the end a single injection point at an end somewhere generally doesn't use more than three to maybe four or five amps. So that's why I have those five amp converters. But in the middle, power can travel both ways. So you'll need to double that up basically. And there the 10 amp or the 15 amp, this, this chunky, chunky boy here, um, might be needed. I don't know. Uh, but first let's figure out if we can actually uh, do this. I mean, let's take 10 meters of cable, so 32 feet. Let's run it in the 5 volt setup, see how that does. And then let's run it in the 24 volt and step down setup. Because um, if we use 18 gauge cable, are we going to get a lot of voltage drop? Oh, let's see. We can actually calculate that. So let's say we have 18 gauge. We're going to run that for 10 meters. And we're going to do that at 5 volt. And we're going to need about 6 amps because we're going to use one of my LED load bars and that takes in 6 amps. <laughs> okay, if we try to push 5 volts through 10 meters of 18 gauge, we'll end up with 2.5 volt at the end. So 2.5 volt or 50% will almost have been burned off just running the power through the cable and then the LEDs will get two and a half volts. Uh, but yeah, so if we do this with five volt, 
that's likely not going to work very well. We're going to test that. We're going to measure what it does with the short cables. Then we'll attach the long cables with 5 volt, see what we actually get. And then we're going to replace that with a 24 volt setup. Because if we change this from 5 volt to 24 volt, we get about 10% drop. We still drop the same amount of voltage, but since we're inputting 24 volt and we're ending up with, well, um, 20, 21 and a half, 22 volt, um, that's fine because this thing takes anything from, uh, I believe 10 volt to 30 volt and converts it to 5 volt. So yes, we'll still be losing some power in the cable, but it shouldn't affect the LEDs. And now we should be able to use much thinner cable. So let's say we go to 22 gauge. Sure, that's a 26% drop or six volts, but it still wouldn't affect the LEDs. The cable might get a bit hotter, but it's, you know, there's always trade-offs, but at least you don't need a, a very thick cable because if we wanted to stay Within that 10% for 5 volt, uh, let's see how, what do we need to get 10%? Well, even, uh, even 12 gauge isn't enough. Wow. So 12 gauge is, uh, hold on. 12 gauge is this giant thick cable here. And even running 10 meters of that would still give me 12% voltage drop if I wanted to draw 6 amp, which is just one of my LED load bars. And in comparison, uh, this, this is the 18 gauge I want to use. <laughs> As you can see, that's much smaller, but using 24 volt on this one versus 5 volt on this one should in, th in theory still be more efficient on this one. So you can use much thinner cable and prevent a lot of the issues. Oh, right. I don't... Philip, you're right. I'm, I'm, I'm being an idiot. Philip's right. Guys, if you're ever in the Discord, listen to Philip. Because even, he even spots my mistakes. He's right. If we're doing 24 volt, we don't need 6 amps anymore. Because we're converting from 24 to five so we're dropping it down and well let, let's say we only need uh wait let's put this back to 18. so yeah let's say we need two amps we're only going to be using losing like three to four percent because we're down converting so one amp at 24 volts is 24 watts so 24 watts divided by five volt is not one amp but about that makes sense to you. So uh, it, it, easiest is always to calculate the watts because for watts, the voltage doesn't matter. And then you can then calculate the amperage for the voltage you want to run. So that's very correct, Philip. I forgot that step. <laughs> so running, uh, I mean, we could even probably run like uh, 24 gauge. Let's see, with 24 gauge, two amp. Oh, okay, that's maybe mid, but 22 gauge. Yeah, even with 22 gauge wire, and I have that in yeah. theory, instead of running 10 meters of this, we could run and see if I find an end here. No. Well, I think it's obvious. We could run 10 meters of this stuff, which is a lot thinner and still have a better result. Uh, so yeah, I, I, this cable is of course way more expensive than this cable. But then again, you have the expense for the converters. So we'll, we'll figure out later what that comes down to. Okay. Uh, so first we need a baseline and figure out two or three settings we're going to do on these LEDs and then measure the power. And uh, last time you saw me using the external meter in the AC socket. And oh, some people asked, yeah, but how much, how much are you losing because of the power supply and stuff like that? Well, uh, I guess let's see. Uh, okay, so I zeroed this meter. Uh, one of the LED load bars is connected with about 143 SK6812 RGBW LEDs. And we're still using that Meanwell power supply we looked at you last time and stuff like that. 
So, okay, uh, WLED is turned on, and currently the meter on the socket is displaying 9.3 watts. And we're seeing about one amp here. So this is about five watt, and the power supply is using about uh, 10 watt. But that's normal. Uh, the power supply also has its idle currents and stuff like that. But let's 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 pick a few values and let's write down what that does. Um, these are about 50, 50 centimeter wires to the to the LED strip itself, and they're 18 gauge, so they don't really lose that much power over that distance. But we're now going to be switching to uh, these wires. So these are also 18 gauge. These are actually the same as are connected to the LED strip right now. Let me turn this off. And, uh, but these are of course much, much longer. Uh, now I have two bundles of this and we'll be using one for power and one for data. And I think I need to unravel this one real quick. Right, so if we measure the voltage for the LED strip right now, we're seeing a good five volt even after that 10 meters of cable. So that's good. Um, but what if we up the brightness? Okay, so we're now doing the, the uh, Pry 2015 and you can already see that the voltage really started to drop. Although if we look at our document, Pry 2015 only used eight watts. So even that causes a voltage drop. Let's go to orange 100%. So let's go to solid and then WLED orange. <laughs> so I'm seeing 13.5 watt draw from the power supply. That is about the same. It's a little bit less, but about the same as we saw before. But now we're only getting two, four and a half volt to the LED strip. So now we're only seeing eight, 0 0.86 amps going to the strip, while before we saw 1.7 amps going to the strip. So although our input power from the socket is about the same, this heap of cable that's now between it is causing so much loss that we've dropped to four and a half volts and our amps are less than half than they were before. So that is just to demonstrate the effect long cables have and voltage drop. Where 18 gauge from the board to the LED strip is fine, 10 meters of 18 gauge is causing a whole lot of drop. Uh, let's go to white, see what happens. Wow, okay. So we're currently drawing, oh wait, maybe I should write this stuff down, huh? And that is showing 30.5 watt on the socket and two 0.37 amps on the meter. So because we're getting such insane voltage drop to 3.4 volts, um, the 6.15 amps went down to 2.37 amps. So this 18 gauge cable, even just for this little strip of 143 LEDs, although it's in forced RGBW mode, um, it still isn't enough. It's it's way too little copper to be ab able to handle this load. So six amps might be unrealistic, but then again, if we're talking uh, 300 LEDs and 300 LEDs, so 600 in total, that middle injection there will do six to eight amps during normal usage. So um, although this is a simulated simulated load and not that realistic, it is a realistic load if you're doing a large LED install. And then if you're using 18 gauge cable, well, that's not gonna suffice. I mean, you, the evidence is right here. We're only getting one third of the load and the LEDs are only getting 3.4 volts only. So that's barely functioning still. Okay, so I guess, well, this was meant to prove the point that running five volt injection cables, you either need really, really thick cables like, uh, you know, like this guy, <laughs> but that gets expensive real quick. Um, or you need to use shorter wires, but you can't in all situations. So let's see if we can use these, uh, these converter blocks 
and see if that actually works and solves the issue of being of transporting the power to where it needs to go. And I'm turning this off because it's very bright.